Should we talk Bernie? Let's talk Bernie, because this is such an interesting topic, Ryan. Uh, Bernie Sanders and Sean Fain. Uh, Bernie Sanders in particular has actually introduced legislation, mm -hmm. but Bernie Sanders and Sean Fain wrote a joint op-ed uh, calling for the 32-hour work week, and Bernie's bill is focused on the 32-hour work week. Tell us what he's proposing. Yeah, and, and uh, Bernie's staff are saying, uh, I saw some of them la uh, last night, that, that they have not gotten a reaction this positive to legislation that they've uh, put out um, in, in years, that, that the kind of the kind of outpouring of support for it has been extraordinarily uh, heartening. But essentially, uh, all, all this bill does is take current law as it applies to overtime, mm -hmm. which currently sits at, you know, 40 hours, mm -hmm. and ratchets that down to 32 hours. And says, if you work over 32 hours, then you start getting paid overtime. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you can't work 40 hours. It just means... If, if it, what it does is it um, incentivizes, you know, companies and people to try to uh, increase productivity um, and, and, and basically, you know, work less mm -hmm. um, and, and, move, and move toward a place right, where we have kind of a more just and decent uh, society. Uh, one of the counter arguments, of course, is, well, now you're going to force people into working uh, more jobs and, and companies are going to you know, try to automate away hours and try to shrink down the number of hours that, that people have. The, the response to that is, what are you, an idiot? You, thi you think that that's not what corporations are doing? <laughs> like the number one goal of corporations today is adopting AI and automation to try to minimize labor costs. Mm -hmm. Like they're already doing that. So what this is, is a response to that crisis. And what it says is that, okay, um, you're trying to reduce people's hours anyway. Uh, what we're requiring is that you pay people a little bit more uh, on on the way there. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so I personally don't support like a federal mandate, but uh, one of my predictions like for the next 30 years, maybe even like the next 10 years, actually probably closer to the next 10 years, is that a 32 hour work week will become normalized in uh, corporate culture. Now, that's very optimistic, but there's a reason I say that, and Bernie Sanders' op-ed with Sean Fain in the Washington Post touched on that in a really, really interesting way. Uh, they talk about how the Fair Labor Standards Act was signed into law in 1940. Then they write, unbelievably, 84 years later, despite massive growth in technology and worker productivity, nothing has changed. Let that sink in for a moment. In a 1974 office, there were no computers, email, cell phones, conference calling, or Zoom. In factories and warehouses, there were no robots or sophisticated machinery, no cloud computing. In grocery stores and shops of all kind, there were no checkout counters using barcodes. Think about all the incredible advancements in technology, computers, robotics, artificial intelligence, and the huge increase in worker productivity that has been achieved. What have been the results of these changes for working people? Almost all the economic games have gone straight to the top, while wages for workers are are stagnant or worse. And it's a really, really important point about technology. Think about when you wake up in the morning, uh, if you are white collar, if you're blue collar, you have to check your phone for professional reasons. Maybe your shift got changed. Maybe you got an email from your boss changing a meeting mm -hmm. time and you had to drop your kid off uh, at 3 p.m., thought you could get out, uh, but now you can't. You're constantly changed to your phone, even if it's 8 a.m., even if it's 7 a.m. and you're you're working out, that's not leisure time uh, because you are always working. You're sending work emails, sending work texts. Um, you are constantly you know, thinking about or, or in communication and thinking about via smartphones and email apps on your smartphones uh, about work in general. Um, and again, it could just be it could be shifts getting changed around uh, that make it hard for you just to put your phone down and actually be without your phone because your phone is a work device. Uh, and so we just have, we haven't shifted the way we think about work. We haven't shifted the way we think about uh, even just smartphones, period. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is a shout out to producer Mac, who is not giving me my leisure time right now because he's texting us there as we're go. talking about smartphones. Um, but in all seriousness, I really think uh, conservatives are way behind the curve in, in talking about work. Um, and that Bernie Sanders and Sean Fain are actually onto something that's way less radical than it sounds uh, to a lot of people on the right who are like, what are you talking about, 32-hour work week? This is America. So this is a very different work culture than it was just 15 years ago. I also think of this show as my leisure time. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, th there's, a, uh, there's a famous uh, example that Adam Smith, uh, ha uh, basically the f father of 
you know, modern economics has, where he, t he talks about a, a pin factory, like a needle factory. Mm -hmm. He's like, basically says like, imagine that you've got, uh, you know, it takes 100 people uh, a week to make 100 pins at this factory. And now all of a sudden, and it's profitable, it's doing well. Now all of a sudden, an innovation comes along. Somebody figures out a way that it takes uh, only half a week to make that many pins. He's like, in a, he says, in a rational and a just society, those 100 people would work 20 hours a week and, and the rest of the time would be spent with their family, with their, with their church group, with their community, playing mm -hmm. softball, just enjoying life. Mm. We'd have just as many pins, the capitalists would make just as much profit, and the world would just be a better place. Uh, instead, because of the power embedded in the political economy, mm. everybody works the same amount, gets paid the same amount, um, but all of that surplus value that was created by that innovation gets just seized by the person that owns the factory. And, and for Smith, who is much more lefty uh, yes. than people give yes. him credit for because they haven't actually read The Wealth of Nations, he was like, that's wrong. Like the, the workers should, and, and society should take the advantage of that, of that innovation, not the capitalist class that is just going to then, um, you know, produce inequality, uh, you know, fritter it away mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, create an, uh, create an unstable society along the way. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's, there's a, a really interesting point too that uh, Bernie Sanders makes. We have a clip of Bernie Sanders. Let me actually table the point uh, and we'll get to the side here because Bernie's <laughs> explosive exchange with a reporter, it has really it's vintage Bernie. a Fox News Bernie. reporter? Or, I, I think so. Or, it's absolutely vintage Bernie though. Let's roll this clip. Senator Sanders, can I talk to you about the 32-hour work week? Yeah. It seems like... Fox Business. Yeah. It seems like Democrats want businesses to be taxed more, pay their really? workers. Really? Is that what you think? <laughs> pay no, their, I think pay their I, workers. Excuse me. I didn't excuse get to ask me. a question. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator, you I. You want to hold it? Okay. okay. We held a hearing on a 32 hour work week because what we have seen is that over the last 50 years, despite a huge increase in worker productivity, almost all of the new wealth has gone to the top 1% while well, 60 percent of the people are living paycheck to paycheck. Many of our people are exhausted. We work the longest hours of any people in the industrialized world. I think it's time for a shortened work week. Can I ask you a question about that? It seems like Democrats want businesses to be taxed more, really? pay, no, pay, their, pay their workers more, so. lower prices, no, think, and now pay Democrats, people not to work. You know what I would like to see? I can How are businesses going to survive that? That's the well, question. I, How can businesses well, survive I all of those proposals? When Mr. Bezos pays an effective tax rate lower than the average worker. I think we have a real problem in our tax system. I think that billionaires have got to start paying their fair share of taxes. He's all up in her grill, Ryan. Uh, so if you were just listening to that clip, Bernie Sanders is just looks gesturing like, looks like, wildly. Looks like it's going to turn violent. Yes, yeah. he's about to fight her. Uh, reporter Class for war in the hallway. In the hallway, yeah. yes. Uh, but really, that's classic Bernie. It is. Yeah, I mean, he, like, he didn't doesn't want to hear... Uh, the nonsense from the Fox Business crowd, but yeah, I and mean, he turned like, straight to the camera. Yeah. That was my other favorite part. Yeah. When she said Fox Business, he rolled his eyes, super exasperated, and just addressed the camera straight yeah. down the lens. And people like overtime. Like overtime is, you know, overtime is the thing that gives you a little bit of breathing room um, when you're when the company is forced to give you overtime. Mm. They don't want to give you overtime. You no, know, they try to figure out ways uh, to either cheat you out of it or to have enough people on staff. Uh, that they don't need to get there. So what this does is it will, would make it easier for workers to get the overtime that they deserve. If, and if uh, a company can't figure out a way to get everything, uh, it's done, everything done that it needs done with, with its workforce working 32 hours a week, then all right, you gotta pay them overtime. Well, you just said something interesting, which is what they deserve. And that's where I think actually uh, just will be surprised by how quickly, and I, I could totally be proven wrong on this, it's, it's happened before, but uh, how quickly different corporations adapt um, after people like Bernie Sanders kind of move the Overton window on this question. Uh, they quote in the Washington Post, they say, studies have shown that workers are e either equally or more productive during a four-hour, a four-day work week. One study found that worker productivity rose with 55% saying their ability at work increased after companies adopted this new schedule. Um, that's, yeah. I, I think that's the important point. There's been a ton of pilot programs of this and everywhere it's been implemented, the company's been happy and the workers have been happy. Yeah.
Uh, so give it a shot. Now, uh, we, we also wanted to play this fun CNBC clip since we've we already got Fox Business in there. Mm -hmm. We, we, we can't going. neglect their ally in the class war. Uh, great clip uh, recently from uh, CNBC talking about the presidential election. Let's roll this one. We often say, you know, when you look at between the policies that Biden or Trump would take in that rematch, uh, it's not like we have a Bernie Sanders socialist running. I mean, you don't have some of the worst case scenarios where they're really anti-capitalist. Even Biden, who is favorable higher taxes, is still pro-business generally. He's not trying to say you should have any business opportunity. So, you know, there's definitely pros and cons of each of them. You have, you know, Trump who could actually bring a much more tariff-oriented mindset to certainly to China, but you worry about like, what do you bring tariffs against? against everything. They're going to be, we're talking about the Fed, you know, Trump has made it very clear he's anti-powerful. So the question is, who would he put in? Some of those people have been actually quite hawkish that he's rumored to t talk about. So we'll see how that impacts things. But in general, we'd say it's not going to be a major difference one or the other, uh, despite all the noise. I'm very happy for the squawk box. Yeah. They, they are getting the presidential election that, that they wanted. I like that we had classic Bernie and then classic Squawk Box, which yeah. is that they can't quite decide if Biden is a socialist or a capitalist. <laughs> it's the same thing with Elizabeth Warren. Whenever Warren. Bernie does something like a 32-hour work week, they're reminded that, oh, yeah, it could be worse. <laughs> yes, you know? Yeah, you always see that play. Yeah. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.